Now, at least three journalists from Takaris Empire FM in the Western region, TV Africa in Accra and Kumasi-based Zuria FM were abused in the heat of the COVID-19 pandemic during the partial lockdown. Their wrong was reporting on COVID-related stories that some citizens and security personnel found unpalatable. But these are just a few of such stories from Ghana and other 14 ECOWAS countries highlighted in a series of surveys catalogued by the Media Foundation for West Africa titled Media and COVID-19 in West Africa. We'll soon be speaking with Muhib Saeed, Senior Program Officer and Team Lead on the project. But first, here's a playback of a documentary put together by Joy News editor Araba Kumsin on the impact of COVID-19 on media houses. Is being negatively affected. Of course. With the reliance on technology now, as media organizations gravitate more towards the use of Zoom and Skype, the cost of data has become a factor to consider in planning during this time. But the most far-reaching impact the pandemic has had on the industry has been the drop in revenues. The media space thrives a lot on activations. Mm. So maybe three, four times in a week, you have an ad agency calling, oh, this brand is launching this. And you, you know, we have a special, um, you know, a, a, a fee mm -hmm. for what we call paid for stories, oh. the business stories. Right, right. And now they're not coming. Mm. And consistently, every week you have those stories, three, four of them, every day in, in a bulletin. Right. Now you don't have that at all because the activation industry is all gone. Right. In this business, revenue comes from sponsorships, right. adverts, and then events. Mm. Events are down. Mm -hmm. So about a third of the revenues are not coming in. Mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, businesses which had like long-term contracts, some of them would say, you know what, we're going to stop the sponsorship and just play spot ads. Okay. So some of the revenues have been affected. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's been tougher. Absolutely. It's been tougher because um, now most companies who had put in X amount for advertising would not advertise. And because of the cost, quite a number of the newspapers have moved from two cities, 50 pesos to three cities. You mean your cost of production? The cost of production has gone up. Delta 170 hash for MTN Momo. And advertising revenues continue to decline. As some companies cut back on their advertising spending on the media, others have completely withdrawn. Although the statistics are not readily available, experts estimate money's being lost could be in the millions of CDs. Now, the Ghana edition does not only reveal the dangers journalists were put in, but also the brutal impact on income sources of media houses, especially print. Senior Program Officer Mohib Saeed of Media Foundation for West Africa joins us via Zoom. Um, first of all, tell us how the research was compiled. Yeah, please unmute your microphone. Yeah, I've done that. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hello. I can hear Hello. you. Yeah, the research was basically a survey that was conducted among uh, journalists and media managers to ascertain the impact of the COVID-19 on their media organizations. And uh, it will interest you to know that the uh, clip you just showed uh, that was put together by your colleague, Harara Kumsi, was uh, also factored into uh, the research that we did. Uh, we, we, we actually cited some of the panelists on, on that program as, as part of the, of the research. And as you said, it is not a Ghana research. It was a research that we did. Uh, across West Africa. So some of your, found, your findings, I mean, show that persons have been abused in Ghana and in other countries. Would you say this is the general picture 
of the impact of COVID-19 on the media? Um, in terms of uh, safety of journalists, I would say that uh, the COVID-19 has uh, increased the tax on, on journalists uh, because it's been replicated in uh, the tax on journalists in Ghana has been replicated in quite a number of countries. Uh, in Niger, for example, a journalist was actually uh, imprisoned for his uh, report on the COVID-19. The authorities deemed his uh, report uh, to be misinformation, and, and he was he was imprisoned. In Cote d'Ivoire, two media organizations, their editors, were sentenced to fines. And in Nigeria, there was a wave of repression against uh, media uh, personnel, including the second of the director of a state uh, news agency, because one of the newspapers under his control published uh, a report that was deemed by the authorities to be, to be false. So it's, it's a general picture. Mm. That's quite worrying. Um, so what are some of the prescriptions that you have made to ensure that journalists are safer in a time like this? Well, uh, we have, for example, uh, written to the Ghana military. Uh, we wrote on the 3rd of May to protest against the attacks on journalists that were carried out by uh, military officers during the lockdown. Uh, we had a reply from the military assuring us that the incidents will be investigated and the officers involved would be dealt with in accordance with the disciplinary code. Of the, uh, there hasn't been any communications again regarding what, what, has, what has happened. And unfortunately, uh, the Ghanaian media has also not made any follow-ups regarding mm. uh, these attacks. But we also had the opportunity of engaging the Ghana Police Service uh, some two months ago, uh, where we kind of uh, launched a framework that is supposed to uh, direct the relationship between the media and right. the police service. So it gives prescriptions as to uh, what the media should do, what the police service should do, anytime the two uh, interface. And we think that uh, these kind of engagements can help to break the cycle of uh, mistrust and, and uh, conflict between the media and the security right. services. Um, it's important that mm. the media fraternity itself takes up some of the, the police and demand the police or whichever security service uh, is the culprit and demand uh, justice. Moib Said, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon on The Pulse.